My name is Duncan Quincy. My research is mostly around mountain glaciers in the Himalaya, the Andes, and how they're changing with climate. A large part of the problem here is that we don't have much data on these high mountain areas. And so any information that we can get is really critical to being able to predict how the glaciers are going to evolve in coming decades. One of the areas where we've been trying to make a real contribution is getting beneath that surface. So we can see a lot about the surface from standing on the glaciers. We can see a lot about the surface from looking down from satellite images. But really very, very few people have gone beneath the surface to be able to see what's actually happening in the glacier below. So we've been using a hot water drill to be able to melt and cut our way through the ice. We end up with a borehole which is 200 meters. We drop the temperature thermistors into that hole. They roll on a long string, so we might end up with 20 measurements at different depths. And then once that freezes up and we get some sort of equilibrium, we can measure the temperatures. And our work so far has shown that on the glacier that we've been working on, which is the Kumbu Glacier, which comes off Mount Everest, the temperatures within that glacier are at a minimum of minus 3.3 degrees. And that's really important because a small change in the climate that then gets transferred into the ice, clearly that can change that ice from a solid to a liquid form. And that's the point at which you get this rapid increase in melt and you get a feedback from the water that's going through, also eroding ice as it goes, and the glacier will very rapidly recede at that point. There's many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who were living in the foothills of very high elevation areas in Nepal, Pakistan, India, Bhutan, Peru. They're all dependent on the water that comes from those mountains to some degree or other, whether it be for hydropower, irrigation, sanitation. So if we can make some sort of evaluation as to how fast these areas are changing and what the prospects for the next 30, 40, 50 years are for these people, I think that's got to be something that's worthwhile doing for humanity, basically.